Hello and welcome to the third of our live PSHE sessions on this Wednesday lunchtime. Um, we hope you've had a restful half term and um, and we hope that the impending lockdown has not brought, brought too many additional pressures or stresses into your school. Um, and with that in mind, um, today's session, we are going to focus on um, staff wellbeing and looking after um, yourself. Um, we're going to do that in uh, in two in sort of in two sort of two parts. Um, the first part, we're going to get some feedback from the from the healthy schools team who've recently been doing um, or um, disseminated a survey out to school staff to get some of the some 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 local um, findings as to how how uh, how people are feeling within their within their schools. Um, so that's going to hopefully be quite interesting to you all. And then we're going to follow that with our colleagues from um, Brook and Head Start um, to explore the impacts of stress um, and get some sort of top tips on how to take care of yourself. And then I believe Ness um, from Head Start is going to do a little bit of an update centered around the five ways, um, five ways to well-being. So uh, lots to cover within the next sort of period of time. Um, but before we progress, we'll do this sort of the usual round of introductions. Our membership alters ever so slightly um, week to week. So always good to introduce people on the call. Um, so first of all, I'll just hand over to our colleagues um, at Brooke for an introduction. Helen, you're on mute. Well, then I'll, I'll turn my camera off then, as well as turning me my, instead of turning my microphone on. So apologies for that, everybody. Uh, my name is Helen Cortine. I'm head of innovation and partnerships at Brook, and I was part of the team uh, that developed and delivered the training that accompanies the curriculum. Um, and hi everyone. I'm Ella Craddock. I'm an education specialist at Brooke and I was part of the team who developed the curriculum and did a lot of writing of the resources quality assuring them and also was part of the team who put together the professional training and really excited to be joining you today thanks so much. We're also joined with from our local colleagues at Head Start Kerno as well so we have Ness. Who is also on mute. Apologies. <laughs> this seems to be the theme of today. Um, so um, good afternoon. My name is Ness Little and I'm Head Start Coordinator um, and I lead on parent family work. Um, and in terms of my contribution to this um, whole initiative, I've been working quite closely with Helen and Ella and other colleagues to look at the parental um, elements of the modules and ensuring that it aligns with other initiatives across Cornwall. And do we have Deborah still on the call or is she has she left? Um, it appears as though Deborah's had to go off and take a call, Chris. No problem at all. No problem at all. So I will um, also I'll pass over to the uh, Healthy Schools team to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Julie. I haven't been on one of these calls before, so um, I'm around. I work part time with Cornwall Healthy Schools, which is why I missed the first couple, but I'm delighted to be here today. If I go next, I'm Cheryl, also one of the Healthy Schools um, team, delivery advisor, and together with Julie, we support the broad reach of the Healthy Schools offer to schools. Hi, I'm Shelley. I am also one of the Healthy Schools, um, Healthy Lifestyles Delivery Advisors, and I also deliver um, training and um, I support the Healthy Under, Under Fives team as well. Perfect. And, and finally, I leave myself till last uh, this time. I am, My name is Chris Wood. I'm the Children, Young People and Families Lead um, at Healthy Cornwall um, and I head up the, the, the Healthy Schools team. So uh, welcome to um, welcome to you all um, today. Um, we are going to start by um, by having a little bit of background set out to us by the Healthy Schools team. So as I was saying earlier, um, the, um, the Healthy Schools team have recently developed um, a survey which 
has gone out in our in our monthly newsletters um, um, and through other avenues and to gain some feedback from school staff as to how they are currently feeling. So um, we're a couple of weeks into into having that available um, and Shelley is going to talk to us a little bit more about that. Yes, thanks very much, Chris. Um, yeah, um, obviously with the return to school um, for more pupils in September, um, healthy schools were very aware um, that they, you know, staff, um, no matter what role you play in school, they, they have had, um, you know, a lot of pressure um, and, um, you know, they weren't going back to school in September feeling rested after the summer. Um, it, it's it's been a really diff different year um, and we just felt that um, the healthy schools advisors felt that it was important to um, give staff an opportunity to tell us how they're feeling um, you know what they're missing um, and uh, you know what they need um, and it's important that we listen to that moving forward so that we can make sure that we're supporting them in the right way and it's not just staff it's governors as well um, so we devised a very quick two-minute check-in uh, we didn't want to put a, a lot of pressure on staff um, but if they wanted to spend a bit of time just elaborating and, and telling us a little bit more than they could there was an opportunity to do that as well uh, we created a survey um, and it, it's an anonymous survey um, so they could tell us exactly how they were feeling um, and uh, we are hoping to roll this survey out again um, after Christmas so we, we um, had this survey, this survey was live uh, throughout October, so for the whole of October, and we had a really good response for our first time. Um, and then we, we hope to roll it out again in January and just make some comparisons and see, um, you know, where, where we're going um, in terms of emotional health and well-being. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a little snapshot of uh, what we found. So um, one of the first questions was, how are you feeling? And we gave them some options. Uh, we give them some positive um, emotions and some negatives. So they could click the box and tell us exactly how they were feeling. And uh, it, you know, straight away, when we looked at the results, we could see um, that 98% of respondents selected negative feelings. Um, so you can see quite clearly um, that tired and exhausted are way up there. And that's not usual for, you know, the, the beginning of a brand new school year. Um, so we've got 70% of staff reported feeling tired and 60% reported feeling exhausted. 37% reported feeling stressed um and almost 46 percent overwhelmed so that's nearly half of um the people that completed the survey were feeling overwhelmed okay so if we just compare that slide to the next one so these are the negative feelings and see the response there um, and you can see very clearly um, that um, there were less responses for the positive emotions so we gave them some um, some options there for positive emotions and 68% of respondents selected positive feelings. 41% of staff report uh, reported feeling supported um, and 32% valued. Um, so, you know, um, we want this to, to get better. We want to see this improve. This is, you know, not a place that they want to be at this beginning, you know, the beginning of the school year. Um, but um, we know that we've got such a challenging time ahead. Um, so, um, yeah, so moving forward, we're hoping that, that um, you know, we can all work together to make an impact on this. OK, so just moving on, uh, if I can. So would you find any of these helpful right now? Now, I don't know if you can see this very well because the print is quite small there, um, but you can see just past the middle there, you can see the blue or the light blue line. Um, and that was clear guidance from the government. We all want clear guidance, um, absolutely. And it, it seems that things are, you know, the guidance is forever changing at the moment. Okay, um, the other thing um, was reduced performance pressure. Um, you know, no matter what role you play in school, there's a huge amount of pressure anyway. Um, you know, with, without uh, coronavirus, there's this pressure 
um, to perform, pressure to get everything right, and, and now there's added pressure as well. Um, so they, 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 fat, they told us that it would be helpful if there was reduced performance pressure and expectation right now, which is interesting. So 57% said reduced pressure, 55% said clear guidance from the government. And for the first time, um, we found that um, the staff were actually asking for staff wellbeing resources. 45% um, asked for staff wellbeing resources and the only 32% for pupil wellbeing resources. So for the first time, it was quite noticeable that they're actually prioritising their own needs. You know, they're, they're, um, they can see that they need that support. And if staff are looked after, then everything else will hopefully start to fall into place. But that's how they're feeling at the moment. And um, we asked them the question, what practices and procedures do you miss the most? Um, obviously, at the moment, there's many changes that um, the schools have had to make to make their um, their um, setting COVID safe and uh, staff are not mixing with colleagues like they usually would. 77% told us that mixing with colleagues is the main thing that they're missing. 62% um, said that they really miss the events and the community celebrations. Obviously, that's really, really important. Um, things to look forward to. 52% said um, access to shared spaces such as the hall. So, um, you know, over half are telling us that they're, they're, they're not going into those shared spaces and they're, they're really, really missing that. So they might be confined to one section of a school or a classroom. Um, and, you know, if they're feeling this way, then obviously children are, um, that's going to be an impact on, on the children as well. Yeah. Um, perhaps they're working with the same people all the time now in their bubble and they're not managing to mix with colleagues that they may have worked with for many years. Um, so um, we have some quotes here, students collaborating and break times, they're missing that. They're, they're missing the face-to-face -face meetings with parents. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that time to connect at lunchtime and break time, you know, is really, really important for teachers, really important for teaching staff, for communication as well, um, an opportunity to visit other schools. So we had a variety of people that, that um, completed the check-in um, and it was open to anybody. So I've got a list of, of um, those that did complete the check-in. And we're hoping that if we can share this um, survey again in the new year, um, that more people will want to complete it. Um, and, uh, and we can actually, um, with this information, we can click on, for example, teachers and we can look at we can narrow down, you know, the answers that, that teachers are feeling, what that what teachers are missing most, um, and what teachers need, and the same for admin staff. And um, we can narrow these results down, which is going to be really, really useful moving forward. Okay, I'm just going to pass you over to Cheryl um, just to give you an insight about the support that the Healthy Schools team are offering at the moment. Hi, and thanks Shelley. So I'll just very briefly talk about what healthy schools can do to support people. Um, a lot of you will know that our aim is to support and, and um, enhance health and well-being across the whole school community. And we do that within four core theme areas, which are physical activity, food in school, and then crucially to this session, emotional health and well-being, and PSHE, which is where this um, series of talks has sprung from the PSHE curriculum. Um, talking about emotional health and well-being, we do have a lot of information and support on our website. And um, the support is aiming to, to help staff and students in school. It's not all about students. Um, the links shown on, I think they're on the next slide. We'll take, there we go. So the links shown on there will take you to the most up-to-date information on our website and the range of support we can offer. 
um, bearing in mind, of course, that that has been restricted somewhat by the COVID situation. So it's well worth it going to the website, which we try to keep that up to date. In particular, we can't at the moment offer the face to face training and sessions that we're used to, but that's not gone away forever, we hope. Um, and so just talking about the survey, as Shelley has just said, we were really delighted with the number of people that took part. And when we repeat it, it won't be quite the same questions, but we'd love even more people to take part because obviously the um, more participants we get, the stronger and more reliable the results will be. So if you completed it, brilliant and thank you. If you haven't done this time, please look out for it. And if you could also encourage colleagues in school to complete it, and as you've seen, it was completed by a broad range. We want to hear from everybody in school, regardless of what their role is, because everybody is being impacted by the current situation. So um, having said that, Jilly is now going to take over and talk um, about our training offer in a little more detail. Thanks. I nearly joined in with a forgetting to uh, switch the mic on bit there, but <laughs> just remembered in time. Um, so as Cheryl has alluded to, we're not actually delivering our healthy schools training at the moment, but there is a training offer through Healthy Cornwall and uh, there's a link on this page to that training. And if you feel after you have been um, delivering some of the PSHE sessions that you need a little bit more knowledge, particularly around mental health, there are various different um, trainings available through Healthy Cornwall. And there are just three of them listed here. You'll see more on that other page, but three that we thought were particularly relevant. Uh, there's a mental health first aid training, which is being offered digitally at the moment. And that's really, will give any member of staff a little bit of understanding and support you in how to um, consider mental health and look about at the positive aspects as well because mental health isn't just negative it's positive as well and we need to think about well-being generally and also to give you a little bit of advice about addressing any stigma that you might come across so this is a course that's that's at a fairly um, sort of introductory level but it's really really useful and supportive for any staff and i think at the moment it's a useful course for adults, but also to be looking at your pupils. This will give you a really good understanding of what you might be seeing, um, which you perhaps haven't been aware of before. So the second one there, making every contact count is often abbreviated to MEC. Um, and again, this is really about making the most of any simple conversations that you might be having. It's about grabbing opportunities and moments to um, have a significant conversation with somebody. Um, and it just gives you some tips and ideas about how to do that. So again, a really good generic training that would be very highly recommended to anyone. Um, and the third of those, the suicide first aid, again, might be something that you're particularly thinking about at the moment as um, uh, some CPD for yourselves. At present, we're not running the ASSIST courses, which is the Applied Suicide Intervention Skills Training, because that's a face to face delivery. But we're hoping that within the new year that will run. Um, so it's a really good idea to just keep an eye on that page um, and see how we're delivering, because we're constantly trying to update that training offer and make it as available and as relevant as possible as we move through this pandemic. So if we just move on to the last slide, we wanted to leave on a sort of slightly positive tone now. Um, and this is just one of the very many pages. Every page in this book is quotable. It's a fabulous, fabulous book. Um, the Boy, the Mould, Fox and the Horse by Charlie Mackesy. And I just wanted to think about, although we're going through this difficult time and how it feels that we've got a long way to go, we also have to look back and consider how far we've come. We've travelled an awfully long way since March 
and schools have done the most fantastic job and sometimes we just need to look back at that, pat ourselves on the back and remember some of the positives. Thank you very much, guys. That's absolutely brilliant. Really, really we've set the scene beautifully. So we'll now, without uh, you know, uh, absorbing any further time, I'll pass to um, Helen and Ella at Atbrook. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, um, both, uh, all three of you. That was, um, it was so interesting, and I think it's so relevant for the conversations that we've been having with teachers um, about, you know, not only are we uh, in the middle of a, uh, a global pandemic uh, and all, all of the things that that's brought us but at the same time in this PSHE context that we're running these question and answer sessions for you is, is the expectation that uh, schools will deliver uh, a new curriculum and a new curriculum that absolutely touches on the reality of children and young people's lives and on our lives and I think the findings of the survey that was so really well presented there for us uh, really reflect the, the conversations that we've been having with teachers and schools supporting people to, to do you know what you've just shown us there Jilly in that lovely quote is how do we keep uh, moving forward and support each other so as part of that we thought what might be really helpful is to it's by no means uh, a, a full session on stress and the complexities of stress and how we experience them but what we thought was useful is to look at the Mental Health First Aid England model that they have universally and freely available from their website for us to look at and consider um, what stress is, uh, how it affects us, and really importantly, and then leading into what Ness is going to talk to us about, what we can do about it. So it's just a model to give us some food for thought to think about how we might be able to uh, become more aware of our own stress, our own signs of stress, and some things that perhaps we might be able to put in place to give us a little bit of a support with it. So first off, stress is, is uh, we all experience it, everybody experiences it, it's, it's a natural response, and in some cases it's helpful uh, in situations where we're under demand or pressure, because it, it will release uh, a, a set of energies for us to stay up longer, work harder, it sharpens our uh, senses uh, and our ability to cope so it's normal we all experience it and it can be useful but where it isn't useful is where it's over we feel overwhelmed by it and where the demands and pressures that we're experiencing in our life uh, overwhelm our ability to cope with it so this is a model that just helps us to think about it so I'll just tell you how the model works and then we'll we'll work through it but really it's a little bit of food for thought for you and I, I would invite you as you you're listening to me talk about it and look at the model is, is to really be selfish and think about yourself here and really apply it uh, and, and see how useful uh, you might find in, in thinking about how stress affects you so what we have is a container uh, that's full of water and we have um, a tap. So the container represents our capacity uh, to, to cope with the stress. Um, the water represents the stress and the tap are the things that we do uh, to help ourselves uh, manage it. Uh, so uh, Ella, could we have the next slide, please? So we all experience it differently. And one of the first things um, to say is that uh, with no blame or judgment, some we have different capacities and capabilities to manage stress. So some of us will have a very big container uh, and some of us will have a small container. Now, the size of our container is influenced by many things. A lot of it is genetic factors. It's what we're born with. But some of it can be linked to experiences in childhood, uh, to adversity that we've experienced that have, has meant that our fundamental capacity which is represented by in this model by the size of the container is smaller so what that means is as the stress comes in which is the water filling it up it fills up uh, much quicker and much sooner and by less uh, than other things so there's something about us giving ourselves permission 
time and the care that we would give to others to just understand and accept the size of our own stress containers. There is no value in having a big stress container or a small stress container. It just is about understanding yourself. And then the, we're just going, we're talk, going to talk, I'm going to talk about the tap a little bit more in a second but the tap is is it's what a tap does it'll uh, it'll let some of the water out so it's the things that we do that will let some of that stress out so if we know and understand that we have a smaller container or and and as well that our container quickly by the stresses and pressures and demands that we're dealing with in our life then we have to pay more attention to the tap so just uh, for us all to just take the time to think about that for our so if we could have the next slide, Ella, please. Helen, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but you might want to hold your mic slightly away from you because the scratching is affecting our, your sound quality. Ah, sorry, no sorry. Problem. Is that any better? Loads better. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was um, it's because it's me headset. So sorry about that, everybody. Um, so we're now just going to think a little bit about the sources of stress. And again, we will all experience these things really differently. So whether that, as we've just been talking about, is a change, a global change that we're all currently in. So all of our stress containers have been filled a little bit more by the circumstances uh, that we're currently in and by how that has affected us. If we add into that the demands of our job, the demands of losing jo our job, it's what fills each of our stress container is unique to us and what may fill one person's stress container in one way may not fill another so there's a real invitation for us to think about that from a very uh, individual perspective and give yourself time to think what are the things that actually stress you not are the things that are expected to stress you and i think that was really interesting in in that presentation that there's an opportunity for everybody to say what it is um, that currently uh, is affecting them because that's where you get your clues for your tap that's where you get your clues for your tap so just a, a couple of things to point out is we we if we are say for example in a global pandemic our container already has a sizable amount of water in it if you then lose your job you add a, another sizable amount but if there's nothing big so we can see with the drops there of the stress some are bigger some are, some are small if you have something big that is a, a stress or a pressure that will fill your container up very quickly to the point where it's uh, overflowing but equally a lot of small pressures can and what we find can happen is that the point of overflow where it's full where we are absolutely beyond our capacity can be prompted by something that is really small as well as something that's really large and i'm sure we can all relate to that point where that just one little tiny thing is the thing not on its own uh, but it's the little thing that uh, that has taken us to our limit uh, of being able to manage our current level of stress so if we go to the next slide please ella So um, what we have here is 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 just a, a real invitation to think about what they call in mental health first aid, uh, and and you have this course running uh, in in Cornwall, uh, is when you uh, get you're getting to the limit or you're at the point where your stress container is full and overflowing, they call that the, you have we have a stress signature, we have signs that we understand in ourselves. Uh, where we are getting to our limit and where if if we spend a little bit of time understanding ourselves and sharing that with people that are close to us, sharing that with colleagues, giving colleagues permission um, to have a conversation with us when they can see us getting to our limit and we're so busy trying to manage it, we can't see it. That can be really, really helpful. So it's understanding and there's some examples here of what that might look and feel like. We might become more irritable. Uh, we might become more tearful. My stress signature is quiet. Uh, I go quiet. I'm normally quite bubbly and, and positive and vocal. Uh, if I'm quiet, that's a sign. Uh, that's one of my stress signatures. Um, we, we maybe find decisions harder to make. Uh, we might drink more, whether that's tea, coffee or alcohol we might smoke or vape more 
Um, uh, and we may find, uh, as we saw in the survey, that we're feeling more tired, a little bit more headachey uh, and, and more um, gastro uh, upset stomachs. So it, it, th there's a real thing in this model to help us think about what is our stress signature so that we're aware of it ourselves, but then we can share it with people that we trust, people that we feel close to, so that we can receive that support. I'm a mental health first aid instructor, and I know that's one of the things that we talk about on the mental health first aid course um, that Jilly talked to us about earlier. So uh, next slide, please, Ella. So this now is thinking about the tap and what uh, this draws our attention to is that we have lots of ways to cope with stress. And most of us, although we're coping with fairly high levels of stress, that we're quite resilient. So I think there's, there's something about recognising and valuing our uh, resilience and our ability to cope and manage uh, levels of stress. But we've got to really guard against being complacent and not recognising when that's pushed too far. And one of the things that we are recommended and invited to think about is some of the helpful things that ha keeps our tap running and some of the things that are less helpful. And this is an art and not a science where, you know, sometimes having a drink in the evening really helps unwind. But what that can possibly lead to is a further stress or further challenges down the line. Um, same with overwork, staying up to get your work done, it's done uh, and finished. But if that becomes a regular habit, again, that's something that, that can cause us uh, a further stress or a further issue down the line. As you know, they highlight here, where we think we've just got to keep going, we're all in this, no, nobody's getting through this pand pandemic really easily. What, why should I be talking about my stress any more than anybody else? Um, it's, it's really to value the importance of not bottling up our feelings and finding a way to talk about it, even though we are all in the same boat and we are all dealing currently with the pandemic, is to really value our own individual experience and recognising that and sharing that with people that we trust. And then we move on to, which uh, Ness is going to pick up for us, is some of the things that keeps your tap running uh, because we may have things that would normally, like a lot of us, uh, exercise regularly and that's become more challenging or our social lives are one of the things that really help. That's our tap that keeps us uh, the, the, the release of the stress for the week. A lot of those have been um, uh, reduced or limited uh, or eliminated completely uh, from our lives. So we may have to think about something different and Ness is going to share some really strongly researched and evidenced ways that we know will help uh, alleviate stress and lift our mood and improve our emotional and mental well-being without making it sound that Ness is going to come along with a slide and we're all going to be de-stressed and fixed. It really isn't like that. Uh, it, this really is food for thought and really to invite and encourage you to give yourself the, the time and the permission to sit down and think about yourself um, because we all in our roles are carers and givers. Uh, so the last slide please is just a little tool um, that, that uh, to offer to us is just to take this as a weekly check-in, use this idea of your stress container, get a sense of how big yours is, uh, the things that really are the big drops that really fill that in for you, the multiple little ones, what that is like and what's in it this week. Um, have I been showing any signs of my stress signature? Have the children said anything to me or has, has anybody around me said anything that I could pick up on? And um, how's my tap? How am I spending a little bit of time uh, thinking about what I need to do for myself to alleviate the stress? So that's um, a little bit of food for thought on stress. I, 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 I've taught this a lot as, as I do the mental health first aid in, instruction. I think it's a really useful, uh, you know, we can get a lot out of it if we apply it. And I think Ness is going to pick up and talk to us uh, about the five ways to well-being and uh, utilising that uh, to, to support us thinking about and managing our stress. So thank you for that.
Thanks very much for that, Helen. Um, I will just look to share my screen. Here we go. OK. So hopefully everyone can see that. Yes, we can. Great, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, so just to follow on really from what um, Helen has been um, talking about. Um, and one of the things that I feel it's important to mention, because many of you that we'll be talking to will have done a level of training, either trauma informed or solly whole um, or thrive. So we'll be very, very aware of the importance of um, an emotionally available adult. So at um, Head Start Kernow, one of the things that we recognised very early on was that although at the moment we might all be in the same storm, that can look very, very different for all of us and we can be in very, very different boats. So although we might be relieved to be back at school and within a kind of safe school environment, although we might be happy to be back at work, um, you know, is it safe for us kind of emotion, not just physically, but emotionally and psychologically, you know, there will undoubtedly be extra pressures for you um, at school um, with not just the needs of children, but also parents and other staff that may push your own needs um, into the background rather than the foreground. Um, and schools will have changed somewhat. So at Head Start Kerno, we recognise this um, and we have put a number of re resources on our website, which are available not just to school staff, but to other um, organisations to help and support you to enable you to be able to put into place strategies and support plans so that you can take care of your own emotional health and well-being. Um, and one of the things also to pick up about kind of human resilience um, is that it's neither a fixed point nor an inherent quality. So and we all know that it can fluctuate over time. And as Helen has described, um, very beautifully and articulately that you know a global pandemic for most of us has increased our level of stress and anxiety and worry so that certainly has kind of um, made our own capacity for resilience maybe diminish somewhat um, so I think it's important to recognize that um, for most of us um, that we will need help and support to build resilience where it has diminished um, and to look at um, the positive connections that we need with a trusted and emotionally available adult um, so that we can seek these relationships out at points where we feel a bit lower and we need some help and support. So I think for you it's about remembering that an emotionally available adult if we go back to any of the um, trauma-informed schools or the Thrive training is not just for children um, it is also important that as adults we have an emotionally available adult that we are able to access that can provide us with that secure space and environment so that we can have those conversations to help us gain a sense of control um, and it does enable us to be able to soundboard to look at problem solving so that we can reach that level of self-efficacy. So, I mean, if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and I know we discussed this um, two weeks ago, then if your basic needs are not being met, you're not going to be able to move forward and to be able to take care of your own yourself and your own emotional needs. So I think thinking about that emotionally and the role of the emotionally available adult that you can also access as a member of support then thinking about what they can provide for you. So it can help you to strengthen your adaptive skills and to find ways to safely ground yourself and also to regulate your own emotions. Because if, like some of us, you can find yourself in a bit of a vortex um, and we know that the thought, feeling, behaviour cycle um, can take a bit of a negative spiral, which means that we're unable to kind of think more clearly and therefore take the steps that we need to regulate our emotions. 
So I think, you know, it's about also looking at new experiences. And we'll look at that in a moment in five ways to well-being in ways that you can overcome some of the perceived obstacles and barriers and help you to maintain that very hopeful and optimistic outlook as well. And what an emotionally available adult also does is provide those positive interactions and can help and support role modelling, resilience and building skills. And, you know, it can be um, a symbiotic relationship in the sense that you can get help and support from each other and that, you know, when you're feeling a bit stronger, then you can support that other person to help build their resilience. Um, and having that person that is kind of quite grounded at the time can provide that very kind of calm, flexible and problem solving approach, which we can find useful when we are trying to work through quite significant feelings and emotions that are weighing us down somewhat as well. Um, and it also provides that level of social emotional connectedness and helps us to attune with another person or an environment um, or our situation as well. Um, so those are all things that um, are very, very helpful as well for us. Um, and I think it's Im important to note as well that it doesn't take something extraordinary to thrive against the odds. We need to build resilience through everyday loving connections, compassion, kindness, achievement and support from caring adults. So those are things it's not rock. You know, I know people say it all the time, but it isn't rocket science. It's just about taking the time to put in the approaches and the stat strategies and the frameworks to enable us to all be better equipped to support each other more. So when we consider five ways to wellbeing, um, you can look on Start Now, Cornwall, so on our website, Head Start Kerno, and there's lots of ideas there for how you can use the approach of five ways to wellbeing, not just for yourselves, but within school. And it gives you lots of ideas on giving and the finding the time for yourself, and also how you can then connect with yourself, with others, with your environment. Um, what you can do as well in terms of get, get moving, so the types of activities that you can do, things that you can engage with, strategies that you can engage with as well to kind of promote that sense of well-being and positive well-being and also helps you to stop and take notice. So take more of a kind of mindfulness approach to what you're doing where um, and also it validates the importance of and allowing yourself to give yourself permission to take the time to take care of yourself because as Helen has said and my other colleagues have said, that actually it's very difficult to support anybody else if you're not feeling supported yourself. Um, one of the um, great pieces of research currently um, has recently been undertaken with the Wildlife Trusts um, and they are advocating nature for well-being. So a lot of very recent research um, and Wildlife Trust did a piece of research with the Leeds Beckett University and what they were showing was that the natural world is the foundation for our health, well-being and prosperity and that actually if we engage in a thriving wildlife rich environment that has positive benefits for physical, mental, psychological health and well-being. So we already know about and we've discussed the power of blue and green spaces, but what these research pieces are saying that actually they are vitally important and integral to our sense of well-being. So for us in Cornwall, we are very fortunate to live in a very wildlife rich environment with lots of different natural environments around us both green and blue spaces so we have the sea and we have the moorlands we have you know rural areas that we can visit so for us that's really important in terms of helping us to get one get more active but also to build that mental resilience that we need to enable us to feel much better so some of the things as well to to think of are that self-care is not is not selfish um, and as Helen has said you know you can't serve from an empty vessel so it's that glass half full or half empty um, but you need your glass to be full um, in order for you to function at your best and to be your best as well so taking care of yourself is vitally important if you want to take care of others. One of the ways that, um, one of the things that we really, really love at Head Start Kerno um, is um, the Action for Happiness website. 
absolutely brilliant. So every month they have an action calendar. And what this is really good for is just bringing to the forefront the importance of doing something different every day. And it gives you different opportunities to try different things as well um, and to um, test your own kind of boundaries, um, challenge yourself, um, but they're really, really good. So you can go back. They've got a backlog of all the different calendars that they have had, you know, over the summer and through the spring. So these are really, really good ways to print, put up, and then you can try and do these um, every day of the week as suggested. Um, what we have coming up as well, which would be really, really beneficial for you, is the... Um, mental health and well-being in school so it's free training for all school staff governors and colleagues so it's to support mental health and well-being in schools um, and head start have been working with the educational psychology service to help to bring this training to you and their materials that come from the dfe um, and it's about providing practical and flexible resources to help you within the school to weather the storm um, and there are webinars that, webinars that are available. Again, you can find these um, on the Head Start Kernow website as well, but those are some of the dates that are upcoming for webinar one. What I can tell you is that we have 200 people already signed up for these webinars, so I think they are going to be hugely popular. Another thing that would be useful and helpful in terms of bringing the importance of emotional health and wellbeing to the forefront is thinking about um, the Head Start Hub. So this is going to go live on the 11th of November. And um, this is a platform that is dedicated for school and school staff, um, particularly to aid and help schools in supporting children, young people to ask questions, share ideas and good practice. But in the meantime, what it also does is provide a platform for you as professionals to kind of connect together and to also explore kind of some of the challenges, some of the difficulties and what help and support you will need moving forward. From a resources perspective, um, there is the trauma informed schools, the practitioner supervision. So this is hugely beneficial to professionals that have attended um, supervisory sessions. Again, because it provides that support for your emotional health and well-being, allowing you to discuss particularly complex cases. So when we think of um, vicarious trauma and the impact and effect of hearing trauma from children and other young people, then this is a good way of sharing your experience and worries and concerns with other practitioners on those sessions as well. You can look at Every Mind Matters. We've also got Action for Happiness. And the other um, resource rich um, website is the Anna Freud website who have some excellent staff wellbeing resources. Um, and again, it's part of their Free Schools in Minds network as well. Um, and there's a number of wellbeing guides for staff. Um, and I've added a link there for one that we particularly like at Head Start Kerno. So um, finally, um, again, because I think the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse, um, if you haven't read it, it's a beautiful book. But again, it's just to reiterate the fact that you know, you are doing incredibly well and people are functioning um, in quite difficult circumstances, but doing an amazing job and showing an amazing amount of resilience. Um, and I think possibly, you know, moving into the next year, what we will do is we will look back at this time um, and we will realise that actually it has made us a lot stronger. So thank you very much. And I will pass back to Chris. Thank you Thank all you very, very much. much. Um, uh, really, um, um, really valuable, valuable use of time again. Time. Yeah. Really appreciate the time you guys dedicate to this. It's really, um, it's really awesome. Sorry, Ness, can you mute? Is that all right? I can hear myself. Sorry. <laughs> No problem at all. Um, so basically, just to round off, I hope we, we hope that what you've taken from today is that from from the Healthy Schools guys spelling out, you know, that with that survey that, you know, if you are feeling stressed, under pressure um, and feeling some of those things that Shelley outlined in the survey, that you're not alone. There's um, a lot of people feeling that way in school settings around Cornwall. Um, and obviously, and, and thanks to, uh, to Brooke and to Head Start, who've obviously hopefully you know outline some of the reasons why um you know why it is you're feeling like you're feeling and you know the the impact that 
how you are feeling and or what it can the impact it can have inside of your school so um hopefully you know you're able to go away consider that and i mean i think what we're also outlined is just how fortunate we are to have Head Start Kerno um, in Cornwall with all those fantastic resources um, and support that they can offer you, um, and also and and you know and, and again that that healthy Cornwall training which Jilly which Jilly outlined um, you know which is um, free of charge which is again a very fortunate thing for us to have it in Cornwall and, and recently we've um, developed um some tri some um some trio workshops which are designed to um accommodate uh, professionals who are who are have limited time um those are just two hour workshops and they center around uh, managing stress mindfulness um sleep hygiene and things like that so again things to consider and the links are we're, we're on the we're on the presentations i would just say with regards to that obviously if you are watching the recording you won't be able to access those links on the recording so please don't think twice to um communicate to the healthy schools team who will um, who are able to send you these presentations on request so please um please do um please do do that um and then really just to conclude I just wanted to remind um, everyone that there is one further session um, planned for this, which the um, group will no doubt discuss the theme of that follow shortly after shortly after we can, can conclude this. Um, and they are available on all of these recordings as we go are available on the on the Healthy Schools website. So please do um, please do you know um, watch those um, and feedback. And as I keep saying, we want your engagement. We want your we want you to input into these sessions. So we know at the moment this isn't a good time and there's a lot of lot of a lot of pressures a lot of things in schools that are stopping you being able to join at the moment but when the time is right and when you can afford it or just want to submit some questions um for us to 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 to, to you know to to respond to then please please uh, please do that um finally just thanks to these wonderful people on screen for their time um, as I say join us if you know we're going to have another session on the on the on the 19th um, 8 45 so if you can join us then please do um, but if you can't then please don't worry we're going to have another theme session recorded and available um, for you all so until then wish you all the best and um, have a great rest of your day bye bye